Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are finally going to be jumping in and taking a look at X-Plane 12. The sim has been out for quite some time now and as I'm sure many of you are aware, X-Plane typically offers some of the best flight modelling available for PC flight simulation. Graphically though, whilst we have seen some major enhancements between X-Plane 11 and X-Plane 12, it's fair to say that graphically X-Plane does still lag behind the competition. The sim can look pretty great but it can also look very average at times as well. Today's video then is a little bit of a hybrid really, we are of course going to be taking a look at X-Plane 12. We're also going to be featuring the RXEG 737, an aircraft that was recently updated to X-Plane 12 standards. I've also spent a significant amount of time here tweaking the sim graphically, trying to get it broadly on a par with the likes of Microsoft Flight Simulator. The results are a little bit mixed but I would say it's about 70% of the way there. And of course what you lose here in terms of graphical fidelity with an X-Plane, you certainly make up for with regards to realism. So hopefully this video will be of interest to many of you. I know of course that many of you are Microsoft Flight Simulator users. Again this is not vanilla X-Plane 12 by any means, I've used a significant number of tweaks and tools, most of which are freeware. I'll leave a list of the modifications used down in the video description below. In terms of our flight today, as discussed we're going to be taking the RXEG 737 for a short flight from London Gatwick where we're currently on the ground up towards Edinburgh. Flight time will be around one hour, we'll be cruising at flight level 340, uploading 5.6 tonnes of fuel on board the jet. As you can see, weather on the ground here at Gatwick is not particularly pleasant. The conditions up in Scotland should be a little bit nicer, we're holding Glasgow as the alternate today. The classic 737, one of my favourite aircraft of all time, I didn't really get much of a chance to try the RXEG version within X-Plane 11, so I've really been looking forward to testing and demonstrating the aircraft within X-Plane 12. I do hope you enjoy the video, as always if you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. So welcome to the cockpit of the RXEG 737 and of course to our first outing in X-Plane 12. I've got to say graphically after quite a lot of tweaking I'm actually really impressed with how I've got the sim to look and I'm very excited here as well to demonstrate the aircraft to you. As I mentioned earlier on the 737 Classic, one of my favourite commercial jets probably of all time, certainly the cockpit one of my favourites. So again, as you can see, the sim not looking half bad. The aircraft as well is overall very nice, if rather pricey for what it is. And it's worth noting from the get-go that I'll be using the FT Sim sound pack for the aircraft. So if you like what you hear throughout the flight, perhaps worth heading over to their Patreon page. As you can see, we boarded a completely cold dark jet here, which is a little bit unusual, but I thought it would give us a good opportunity to work our way through the setup, hear the sound set as well in its entirety. So firstly, coming up to the overhead panel, We'll get the battery master on. Battery voltage is checked, we'll take a fuel pump on here, we'll get the APU fired up. That's obviously just going to take a little bit of time and again we'll just enjoy the sounds as we go, the sound set overall is really great. There are just one or two areas which don't currently work on the aircraft, given that the sound set isn't really designed for X-Plane 12, so you do lose for example the trim sounds which is a shame, they're pretty iconic on the 7.3 of course. So the APU just running up, you can see there we've got a rise in the EGT, we'll just wait until that's stabilised. Looks like we've got a bit more rain passing through the area now. Certainly a very miserable day here on the ground in Gatwick, should be quite a bit nicer up in Edinburgh. So the APU is now available, output looks good, we'll take that onto the bus. And fairly mild outside, 16 degrees, so we could probably go without the packs but we'll turn those on anyway, just get the cabin feeling a little bit more comfortable. Safe you bleed on, packs are on, we'll set the isolation valve through to open. We'll tune up the ATIS, see what the weather's doing. That's on a frequency of 136525. Visibility 3 miles, rain, sky conditions scattered at 800, scattered at 2300, broken at 4300, temperature 16, 2.15, QNH 1008. Advise on initial contact you have, information Juliet. Now 
London Gatwick, information Juliet, Pan 35, Zulu Special. Arriving runway 26 left, departing runway 26 left, wind 180 degrees at 7 knots, visibility 3 miles, rain, sky conditions scattered at 800, scattered at 2300, broke at 4300, temperature 16, 2.15, QNH 1008, advise on initial contact you have, information Juliet. Okay, so information Juliet, they're using runway 26 left as we'd be expecting. Nice to see there as well that X-Plane actually got the correct runway here out of Gatwick. Wind 180 at 7, 3 miles visibility, rain obviously, scattered at 800, temperature 16 degrees, and the QNH is 1008. We've got that set there on all three altimeters. We'll start running through the setup here for the cockpit, and I'm going to try and do that as much as I can from memory, just for my own sake. I think it'll be quite interesting. Obviously they'll be running the checklist at the appropriate stage of each part of the setup process. And usually, typical I believe to work your way down in the Boeing, but I'm going to work my way up. Just a little bit of a force of habit there from the Airbus. So the fuel pumps will leave for now. Instrument transfer switches are set. Fuel damper is selected on. And the flight control switching is correct. Once again, the APU on the bus. Galley power can now go on. We'll set the IRs to start aligning. And as you'll see, just a little bit of an abbreviated setup here the flight today, just running through the pertinent items. So IR1 set to nav, and same there on IR2. The engine start ignition selector will go through to left for the first start of the day. No smoking signs will set through to auto, fasten seatbelt signs. We've actually already got the aircraft fueled up. We've got 5.6 tonnes of fuel on board for we'll a run up to Edinburgh this morning, so seatbelt signs can go on. Emergency exit lights are armed. Electric hydraulic pumps will leave off for now. Same there for the anti-ice. Window heats can go on. And for the pressurization system, we're going to be climbing up to flight level 340 today, so we'll set that. So I'll cruise out. Olympic 423, are you on a heading? Uh, negative, director Lambert. Roger. There's 340. And 340 gives us a cabin altitude of 6,800 feet, so we can set that. Station calling again. There's 68. Landing altitude will set later on for Edinburgh. For now, we'll just set 200 foot for the return to Gatwick. In terms of the bleeds, once again, we've got the APU bleed on currently. The pack's selected through to auto. We'll take the recirc fan on there as well. And for the temperatures down the back, we'll just set those through to auto. In terms of the cabin temperature currently, up at around 31 degrees. So again, Leaving the packs there to cool things down. In terms of the MCP, we'll take the flight directors on. Mine first to make flight director one the master. Same there for number two. We'll configure most of the MCP once we've got the box set up, but we can set a few things up here ahead of time. So for the SID later on, we'll set 079 on my side. Up to 205, Roger. Climb flight level 370. We'll brief up the SID once we've got the cockpit set up. And we'll set 336. Go on the first officer's side. Again, speed will set once we've got the box set up. Runway heading, we'll just dial in 260. We can refine that once we've looked at the charts. And I believe the stop height is going to be 6,000 feet. Again, we'll double check that during the briefing. In terms of the flight instruments, once again, the altimeters are set. Standby attitude indicator looks good. Auto brake will set through to RTO. I'm going to get down three greens. Throttles are idle, speed brakes stowed, flaps are up. Engine start levers are in the cutoff position. For the comm radios, we've got the Gatwick Atis tuned up there on standby. We'll leave that for now. Nav radios, a little bit of a bug here. We've got 101 decimal 09, which is not a frequency available on the nav radio unit. But again, we'll tune those up based on the SID. So we're going to need Detling on nav 1. Delta Racker Tango, that's 117.3. You can see the bug clears itself as soon as you activate the radio. So, Detling on Nav 1, we'll come over to Nav 2 in just a second. For my Nav display, I'll take map and a range of 20 nautical miles. I'll take traffic display on and weather radar display on. I'll take VHF 1 there on the audio control panel. 
Certainly no need here as well for the HF radio today. We'll just set 2,000 here on the squawk. And for now, TGAS can stay off. Transponder in standby. Again, no need for the ADF. COM2 looks good. NAV2, we said uh, Lambourne, Lima Alpha Mike, 115, decimal 6. Ryanair 234 Zulu, climb flat up for 370, route direct to Palmair. And again on the first officer side, we'll take map and 20 degrees. HF1. And in terms of the trims, we've got neutral there on the rudder trim. Same as well for the aileron trim. Cockpit door currently set through to auto. Doors open at the moment, no passengers currently on board. They'll be boarding in just a moment's time. So that's the initial setup complete. We'll come down to the CDU. We can start setting that up for the flight. Firstly, we'll go through to index. And ident, you can see we're a 737-300. 20k there on the engine ratings. And the nav database is a little bit outdated, but certainly good enough for the purposes of our flight here today. On to Posinit, reference airport is Gatwick, Echo Golf, Kilo, Kilo. However, we're going to align here off the GPS position, so GPS left. And we'll set the IRs to align off that. For the routing, once again, Gatwick. Heading up towards Edinburgh, Echo Golf, Papa Hotel. It's going to be runway 26 left, as per the ATIS. And flight number today is BA2936, so Bravo Alpha Whiskey. 2936. In terms of the departure, runway 26 left, we're expecting the Lambourne 6 mic departure. That's going to take us out towards the Lambourne VOR. Thereafter, we're going to be picking up the Lima 10 airway, bound towards Brookman's Park, which is Bravo Papa Kilo. And then we'll pick up the Up November 601. Right, Runner 234, Zulu, redirect to Palmer. That's going to take us towards Waypoint Inpip, India, November, Papa, India, Papa. We can activate all of that. And then for the arrival, expecting the ILS 24 into Edinburgh given the current weather conditions, it'll be the Inpip 1 Echo arrival. And we're actually going to come in via Tala, Tangalima Alpha. So again, we'll execute that. In terms of the routing, that's going to give us a little bit of a mismatch in the flight plan. We've also got uh, Tartan. Tartan's actually past the Tala waypoint, so we'll select Tala and we'll put that over the top of Tartan just to clean up the flight plan. That'll give us a direct routing in towards Edinburgh. So once again, we'll execute that. We'll run through the checks of that later on as the uh, passengers are boarding. Typically, we do that now, but uh, for the sake of the video here, we'll continue on with the setup. So back to the init ref and the index performance. We have a planned fuel today of 5.6 tonnes. Zero fuel weight is 42.0, so we're pretty lightly loaded today for the flights. Reserves are 1.9. Cost index is 23. Cruise altitude, flight level 340. The cruise wind is 255 at 51. Easy 65901. Climb flight level 350. And the ISO deviation is 5 degrees. Climb level 350, Transition altitude today, 6,000 feet. So once again, we'll execute that. For the M1 limits, we'll take a D-rate here for the takeoff. So takeoff 1, that's going to give us a takeoff thrust of 18.5k. And we'll take climb 2, save the engines. In terms of the takeoff, I could be wrong on this one, but I seem to recall from previous 737 add-ons that I've flown, you should have an option here on the secondary page of the takeoff reference to select a wet runway for the takeoff. That doesn't seem to be an available option here on the IXEG 737 currently. And there are quite a few options like that currently missing on the aircraft, which given the price you would expect to see typically. Anyway, it is going to be a Flaps 5 takeoff. V1-124, VR-126 and V2-136. Again, we'll set that up on the MCP in just a moment. CFG 22% and that's giving us a stab trim of 4.2 degrees. Also down here we'll just get the weather radar set up as well, so 4 degrees up there on the tilt. Obviously not turning that on just yet. That's it then in terms of the setup off the box, we'll just brief up the departure itself. Currently we're expecting the Lambourne 6 mic departure then, that's plate 20-3 X-ray 1. It's the conventional SID as we've discussed already, primarily based 
off the Detling and Lamborn VORs. Again, we've got those tuned up on NAV1 and NAV2 with the appropriate courses set. This is going to have us climbing off runway 26 left, initially maintaining 220 knots and below 4,000 feet. We'll be making a reciprocal turn out towards the east and picking up the 259 radial inbound towards Detling. No turns below 710 feet and we do need to comply with the altitude restrictions on the departure. The transition altitude as discussed is 6,000 so we'll stay on the QNH here all the way up to our initial climb. And in terms of the departure tracking itself then, it's straight ahead to 2.3 miles off the Gatwick ILS. We won't tune that up for the purposes of the flight here today. Crossing out above 1500, max of 4000, then that right turn to intercept the radial. Maintaining 4000 all the way through till 29 miles from Detling, we can then climb. Speed restriction, 220 knots until we come through 31 miles. Up to 5,000 foot at Acorn, maintaining that until we're all the way through from 50 miles to Lambourne and then up to 6,000 feet, maintaining that until the Lambourne VOR. In terms of the terrain, there's no significant high terrain around Gatwick. The MSA for the departure, 2,300 feet and weather-wise, obviously pretty miserable conditions here, plenty of wet weather around. Nothing though that's really going to affect the outcome of the departure here, there's no icing conditions predicted with the current OAT. The runway is wet, but we would have presumably catered for that in reality with our takeoff performance data. Fairly light winds as well, more or less straight down the runway, and some cloud coverage around. Certainly though, Gatwick good enough if we need to make a quick return. In terms of the taxi, we're currently on stand 140 here at Gatwick today. We're going to be pushing back, nose facing out towards the east on Zulu. We'll then taxi Zulu, most likely onto Mike, taking a full length departure here today off runway 26 left. So that's just about it in terms of the preliminary setup and the departure briefing. A few more items to carry out here through the cockpit setup as the passengers start to board. So we'll wait here on the boarding and we can come back once we're ready for the push and start. As we taxi out for departure, Derek will be showing you a video of the safety features. Please do pay particular attention to the information given on that briefing. And of course later on the flight we wish to Check on our progress, selecting moving map on the video screens at your seat will uh, give an indication of our track over the ground and also indeed the latest estimate of arrival directly from the computers here on the flight. Now, I did mention the strong tailwinds, sometimes they give rise to a little bit of turbulence, but hopefully it should be smooth. However, that uh, turbulence is not always predictable here on the flight deck, we always keep our seatbelts fastened. And uh, if you're in your seat in the cabin, please do also likewise keep your seatbelt fastened. A few more minutes and then we'll be on our way. I wish you a pleasant flight. Our crew will give you some further information. Okay, so we now have everybody on board the jet. The last of the doors has just been closed up. Running through the pre-flight checklist then, the oxygen has been tested and checked. Navigation and instrument transfer switches are set. The pressurization mode selector will leave in ground for the time being. The flight instruments, we've got a heading of 347, 347, and 345 there on the compass. Altimeters showing just above 200 feet there on all three altimeters with the QNH set 1008. Parking brake is set. The engine start levers are in the cutoff position. That is the pre flight checklist complete. We are now cleared for the push. So the anti collision light can go on. We'll take the fuel pumps on here as well. And just running through the panel, we'll take the electric hydraulic pumps on. Packs can go off. We'll set the isolation valve through to auto. Once again, we do have the APU bleed selected on. Trust levers are in the idle position. We'll take the part brake off. We'll run through the before start checklist here during the push, just to expedite things a little bit for the sake of the video. Olympic 411, London, good afternoon. Start your pushback and you may start engines. Okay, so we are clear for the start, for the before start checklist, the fuel. Pumps are set, we've got 5.6 tonnes on board the aircraft, just slightly down there now due to the APU burn. Passenger signs are selected on, the windows are closed and locked. On the MCP we've got V2136, heading of 257 degrees and stop height there of 6,000 feet. Takeoff speeds, we've got V1124, VR126 and V2136, speed bug set there as well on the airspeed indicator. The CDU pre-flight is complete, rudder and ailer on trim. 
our friend Zero. Taxi and takeoff briefing is complete. The flight deck door is closed and locked. Anti collision lights is set on, and that is the before start check is complete. On the master caution, there we've got a lek, anti ice, hydraulics overhead, and air conditioning. Just clear that for now. Again, cleared for the start, we'll be starting the number two first. So the number two start switch can go through to ground. You'll notice during the run up here that the engine does come up to idle very quickly. Apparently that's actually a bug with the sim though as opposed to the aircraft. Apparently Lamina are currently looking at that. So it's come up through 25% there on the end 2 Number 2 start lever can go through to idle. And good light off again. Very rapid rise there in EGT. All pressure looking good. And just waiting here on the number two to stabilise. We do have starter cutouts. And number two stable, starting number one. Britannia 713 Bravo, contact London, 127.87, bye-bye. London 127.87, Britannia 713 Bravo, bye. -bye. Gotta say they're really enjoying getting back into X-Plane, the fidelity is obviously significantly stronger in many respects than Microsoft Flight Simulator in its current state even now. 25% For example there, having the pushback, better pushback is a great little facility. Everything is just that little bit more accurate, that little bit more realistic overall. So again, good light off, all pressures checked. Okay, pushback is complete, we'll set the park brake. Disconnecting toes, stand by. And two good starts. So coming back up to the overhead panel, we'll just check the generator output. Gen 1 looks good. And same there on Gen 2. So we'll take the engine generators on the bus. Really nice effects there as well as we switch over. Heat static heats can go on. We'll take the packs back through to auto. APU bleed can come off. The pressurization will go through to flight. And for the engine start switches, again just a little bit fiddly there on the click spots, we'll go through to continuous. So the engine generator is now taking the load, we'll take the APU off the bus. Trim. Okay, so waiting for signals on the left, the trim set through to 4.2 as per the box. Flaps. Set through to 5 degrees, just waiting for those to run out. And the tug just clearing off to the left. Ryanair 234 Zulu, contact breast, channel 132, decimal 830, blind. There's our signal. So the ground crew clear. Just waiting on the flaps. Then we'll run through the four taxi checks. Thompson 205, resume our navigation check to Barman. Uh, five, thank you. So we have flaps 5 selected, indicated with the green lights. For the before taxi checklist, the generators are on the bus, probe heats are selected on, anti-ice, again not required, the OAT currently 16 degrees. Isolation valve is set through to auto, engine start switches are set through to continuous, recall is checked. Auto brake set through to RTO, engine start levers are in the idle detents, flight controls we have full up, full down, and neutral, full left, full right, and neutral, and on the rudder, full left, full right, and neutral. Still hammering it down here outside, so we'll take the wipers on. And again, really nice effects in X-Plane overall as far as the wipes are concerned. You can see they do actually function correctly. Taxi light can go on, same there for the runway turn-offs. And we'll take the parking brake off. Again, we're going to be taxiing straight ahead here on Zulu. And then right onto Mike. Full length departure out for runway 26 left. Oh, I'll do a 6 8 London, Rod. So just coming up slightly on the throttles. Surprised that the aircraft didn't roll under its own power here given how light we are today. But in fairness, only needing a very small amount of thrust here to get the 7.3 moving, so that's always nice to see. 
Uh, nice rain effects there down on the taxiway as well there. They can look a little bit strange at times in the sim, but overall rather good. Well, that's rare that you see standing pools of water like that, I would say, in the real world on the taxiways. Just feeding a little bit more thrust. FR068, crime flatable 320. So, straight ahead, right on to Mike. We are all clear on the left. We'll just continue the taxi here out towards the holding point. We've got just a few more items to run through as we make our way out towards 26 left. I'll come back to you again once we're in position and ready to go. London Control, uh, France 06, uh, good afternoon, 290, coming to 301. Uh, good afternoon, Jet 860 Delta, flight level 360 to Ammo. Jet 860 uh, Delta, was that you? Good Thank you, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Easy 6591, resume my navigation jet to Coxie. Sorry, right, Coxie, Easy 6591. Okay, so we now have ourselves lined up here on runway 26 left. We've got the auto throttle set through to arm. Hang lights are on, same there for the strobes. We've taken the weather radar on here as well. Transponder set through to auto and TCAS set through to TARA. And you can see there is potentially a little bit of weather here for the departure. We may come onto a heading. We'll see how we go. Doesn't look as though it's too bad there out towards the north. So we'll set the thrust. Initially up to 40% here on the M1. We'll let the engine stabilise. And take off. There's Toga, we have N1 Toga heading select. On the roll. And thrust is set. There's 80 knots, throttle hold. V1 and rotate. Back on the oak. And pitching there up to around 15 degrees. If you have positive climb, take the gear up. So trimming now here to keep ourselves on the flight directors. We're up three four hundred feet. We'll take our nav. Wipers can come off. Baby two zero echo route direct Southampton. Direct Southampton baby two zero echo. And up through a thousand. There's V nav. We'll take command A. And you can see they're already up through a thousand feet. Okay, thrust rolling back now towards climb thrust. That did look like it happened at fifteen hundred feet. To be fair, so we've got N one V nav speed L nav and command. Take the gear back through to neutral. Speed is checked, we'll go flaps one. Professor two, Mike, whiskey climb five level two, nine or zero. Climb five level two, nine or zero, the sun's uh, two, Mike, whiskey. Now take the flaps up. Professor one, kilo, kilo, report speed to under one, three, zero, decimal nine, two, goodbye. So flaps retracting, we'll take the runway turn offs and the taxi light off. We'll just leave the ignition here until we're out of the rain, although it looks like we're out of the worst of the weather. And looks like that weather has now cleared on our departure track. Gears up and off. Water brake is off. For the after takeoff checklist, the engine bleeds are selected on, packs are in auto. 
And the gear up and off, and the flaps are up, no lights. That's the after takeoff check is complete. Out of the worst of the weather now, so the start switch is go back into the off position. Easy 6147, climb flight level 300. And the aircraft just levelling us off here at 4,000 feet, maintaining 220 knots as per the departure brief. We'll come out on the range here on the nav display. Climb flight level 300, easy 6147. So as we discussed here, maintaining 220 knots until we're through 31 miles from Detling, which is the next waypoint. After that we can accelerate up towards 250, maintaining 4,000 feet until 29 miles from Detling. Again, looking pretty good here in terms of the weather currently, we'll just come down slightly on the tilt. Plus 3 degrees is good at our current altitude. And the thrust rolling off here as we level off, maintaining the speed. Bit of a crosswind out from the south. 39 knots currently up at 4,000 feet, back into the rain. 19 degrees though, so no icing considerations currently. We'll reset the heading bug, something which I'm sure I'll forget to do many times throughout the flight. Kessel 7084, turn left heading 010 degrees, descend now flight level 220. So it's waiting on that acceleration phase, there's the next waypoint, now the aircraft coming up towards 250 knots as you can see. So thrust coming on again, we'll keep the camera crew sat down here, obviously still passing through the weather currently. We'll assume now that ATC has given us further climb, so we're clear now. Climb flight level 110. And to do that, we'll come into level change. So we've got N1 MCP speed. And flight level 110. Heading 010, descend flight level 220, Kessel 7084. Dust coming up once again. And we are now cleared above transition altitude, so we'll set QNH 1013 across the board. Both at a two mic whiskey climb five or three one zero turn left heading one one zero degrees. And hopefully now with this further climb, that's gonna have us soon above the weather. Both at a two mic whiskey climb five or three one zero. Climb five three one zero to two We'll keep the speed at two five zero knots for now, if it starts to get bumpy then we might just roll that speed off a little bit. Just to get us above the cloud there as quickly as possible. Private S403 London, climb flight level 290, confirm requested level. And as soon as we are up above this weather, we'll let the camera crew up. They can start their work. Really enjoying the 737, I've had a few outings in the aircraft now, and as I mentioned earlier on, it's one of my favourite aircraft, the classic 73s. Almost certainly my favourite cockpit of any airliner out there. I really like the mix between the vintage and the modern. There's certainly enough automation there to make life a lot easier, but still just enough old school tech to keep things interesting. The aircraft, much like the 7.6 and the 7.5, really was one of those true hybrids between the old and the new in terms of design philosophy and technology. So you can see we are just about to come through the tops of the clouds. Uh, Reaper, number 290, we, uh, 390 would be nice, sir. Roger. Up through 9,000 feet. And we'll actually keep the speed back at 250 knots here as we come through 10 again, just to keep the climb performance until we're up above the weather. Approaching 10,000, we'll take the landing lights off. Look at the two mic whisk report radar heading to London 127 decimal 42, goodbye. And up through 10. British 627, contact London 135 decimal 32, goodbye. 35, 32, British 6. Two, London, good afternoon, baby 30 kilo, 260 to begin speed, 280 or less. Baby 30 kilo, Roger, would you like to increase speed? Oh, yes, please. Oh, Roger, turn right 5 degrees, there's no ATC speed restriction. So we'll set 320 for now. We got a lovely shading there on the shadows in the cockpit, the lighting overall looks great in this particular case. The lighting that I have to say on X-Plane is very hit and miss, and certainly without any tweaking, is pretty off at times. So, tracking back out towards the north, once again we'll centre up that heading bug. Tracking now in towards the Lambourne VOR, which you can see we've got 22 miles to run. 
And again, we'll assume we've been cleared high now by air traffic, so flight level 250. David 20, Echo, contact London 129, decimal 42, goodbye. 2940, baby 20, echo, goodbye. That's T50, once again we're coming to level change. But N1 MCP speed. And now that we've got that excess speed, the target climb speed is 285 knots. We can just slowly roll that off. Just 5 knots or thereabouts at a time. And again, that's obviously going to give us a better climb performance overall. You can see there as well the aircraft did overshoot the turn. I don't know whether or not that's as a function of having the bank angle limiter set through to 25 degrees. But a little bit surprised to see that, and I have noticed that the IXEG will do that from time to time. Just continuing to reduce the tilt there as we climb, there's 2 degrees. And continuing to roll off that speed. All the way back through to 285 knots. 13345 to London, and direct flight in easy 6147. Bye-bye. Again, you don't want to do it all in one go. You can see we're getting a really high climb rate as it is. If you just bring the speed all the way back instantaneously, it's again going to make things just that little bit less comfortable for the packs. So for now, just continuing the climb here up towards flight level 340. And as usual, I'll come back to you again as we approach our top of descent point, at which point we can get the aircraft set up and brief for the arrival. Shamrock 346, contact breast, channel 132, decimal 830, right. Good afternoon, V354, flight level 340. Twist 354, London and Roger. Twist 354, report your position. Our position is 50 miles south of Alito. Twist 354, you've come to the wrong frequency. Contact London 128.42. Bye bye. 128.42, bye. AB 88, correction, Midland 8865, reject all tag. Good day, London United. 915, flight level 280 for flight level 300. United 915, London, London. London Control, very good afternoon. Can I see 31? We're maintaining flight level 350 for Kinley. Channing 231, London, good afternoon. Redirect to Sydney. Sydney, Channing 231. So welcome back to the flight deck, as you can see we are just approaching our top descent point. We've got about 8 miles here to run, so about another minute before we reach top descent. We'll set our initial descent altitude, we're actually going to go straight down to 3000 feet here today, just to get a feel for how the VNAV behaves in the aircraft. And we'll discuss more about that in just a moment's time. DG6147 resume navigation, Clacton, contact London 133, decimal 45. So we have 3000 foot set there on the MCP. And in the Boeing, that's all we need to do. The aircraft will now automatically descend at top descent. We'll keep an eye there on the FMAs. In the meantime, we'll brief and set up for the approach. A little bit uncharacteristic. Typically, we do that during the cruise, but for the sake of the video here, we'll carry out both tasks at once. So for the arrival, expecting, as discussed earlier on, the Impip 1 Echo arrival inbound for the ILS runway 24. We're actually going to break off before waypoint Tartan and come in via Tala. For the star then, it's an INAV star, plate 10-2. That has us tracking initially over waypoint MPIP, which we're approaching about 20 miles currently from the waypoint. It's on the FMA there, we have retard. I believe the auto thrust will go into arm thereafter. And still in VDAP path, obviously now descending all the way down to 3,000 feet. So in via waypoint MPIP, we need to be 260 MPIP. We'll keep an eye there on what the aircraft does. Flight level 200 at waypoint in rev. Speed back at 250 knots at waypoint Eskdo. And afterwards, waypoint Tartan. Not applicable in this particular case. Again, we're not going to be flying to Tartan. Instead, coming in via Tala. From Tala, we'll be approaching for the ILS 24. That's plate 11 3. 
It's the NDB ILS DME runway 24. Frequency 108 decimal 9. Final approach course is 240. Aerodrome elevation 136 feet. And down to the Cat 1 MDA of 300 feet. 200 there on the decision height. In the event of a missed approach, it's climbed straight ahead to 3000, then as directed by air traffic. So pretty straightforward there. Transition level by ATC, we'll call it 10,000 today just to get those checks out of the way at the same time. In terms of the terrain, we do have some high terrain on the initial stages of the arrival. That's up at around 3,000 foot out towards the south of the airfield. And then later on, closer in towards Edinburgh, we've got more terrain out to the south, up at around 2,000 feet. There's also going to be terrain out to the right of the aircraft as we make the approach. Weather-wise, again, it should be fairly nice as compared with Gatwick, certainly no rain forecast. We've got cloud base of around 3,000 feet. Temperature's just below 10 degrees. QNH quite low today, 999 hectopascals. And just a light wind out from the southwest. We'll tune up the ATIS once we get closer to Edinburgh and see what the weather's actually doing at the moment. In terms of the fuel state, currently we've got about 3.4 tonnes of fuel on board the aircraft. Probably going to burn another four or 500 kilos here in the descent, so landing with around three tonnes. Alternate today is Glasgow, we need 1.9 there, so we've got about an extra tonne on board the aircraft. And we planned for about an extra 20 minutes or thereabouts, so fuel state looks good. That gives us a little bit of holding into Edinburgh, should we need it. In terms of the landing, we'll take auto brake 2. We'll arm up these spoilers later on, it's going to be idle reverse. And vacating off to the left. We'll see how we go in terms of the landing. We'll plan to come off at Bravo, otherwise we can always come off at uh, Alpha 1 later on. So in terms of setting the aircraft up for the arrival then, we'll first tune up the nav aids. Edinburgh once again, the ILS there on a frequency of 108.9. FA0002, resume my navigation, begin. Our navigation, begin, FA2. So we've got 108.9 on nav 1. And same there on nav 2. Auto thrust just coming up again. Looks like we did make 260 in pit. We've got 200, I think we said next, at waypoint in rev. I've noticed that the auto thrust does hunt around quite a bit in the cruise. You may have noticed that from the external shots, the engines coming up and down. Anyway, 108 decimal 9 on both nav radios. The final approach course, as we discussed, 240. And there's retard again on the auto thrust. So 240 there on my side. And And same there on the first officer side. Again the auto brake set for the CDU will come down to init ref. It's going to be a flaps 30 landing. So V ref 132, V approach will be 137. And 1089, 241, one degree off there, so within limits. So the box is set up for the MDA. Again, it's going to be 300 feet. We'll set that on the bug and we'll leave the 200 foot DH there for the rollout call out. We've got that on both sides. Landing elevation again, the aerodrome elevation 136. So we'll come up to the pressurization panel. United 915, continue present heading. And we have that set. So just continuing here in the descent, approaching flight level 200. We'll back off here on the weather radar. We'll go for about zero degrees there on the tilt. We'll center up the heading bug again. And just a little bit early here as well, we'll get the passengers sat back down. So seatbelt signs are on. So it's coming up on flight level 200 in Riv. So again, the VNAV path there doing a pretty good job. You can see we're still on VNAV path currently. As we approach flight level 200. There's FMC speed. We'll continue here in the descent. We're going to be tracking out towards Tala. And then making a turn out towards the north for the RLS. In terms of the descent checks then, the pressurisation, landing altitude is set, recall is checked, auto brake, we have auto brake 2 set, landing data, again VREF of 132 plus 5 knots, 137 for the V approach, 
Out for the minimums, MDF 300, DH of 200. Approach briefing is complete, and that is the descent check is complete. Okay, so we're just coming down through 7,000 feet, about to come into the turn round on to final for the Isles Runway 24. Speed currently 240 knots, we've still got 3,000 here pre-selected on the MCP, and currently the heading bug set there at 026. The aircraft's still clean for the time being, we'll slow up in just a moment's time, we want about 180 knots here for the turn. Now they're just coming down through 6,000, that means we need around 24 miles to run, and currently showing 25 there on the progress page. So at the moment the aircraft maintaining VNAV path very nicely, once again the lighting there as well in the sim looking pretty decent in these sorts of conditions. As you can see we're about to come out over the water, again following the DME arc around here, we're final back in towards Edinburgh, you can see the field there, just off the left of the aircraft, just to be in the fourth bridge. Tanya 223 Alpha on the climb flight level 300, confirm requested level. Using Orbex Earth here for the flight today, absolutely stunning scenery in X-Plane, very nice as well in P3D. It is worth noting, of course, though, this is not default X-Plane scenery. It's highly customised scenery specifically for the UK. Quite pricey, but again, a really nice addition to the sim, and seems to work very nicely as well within X-Plane 12. British 940, route direct Benbow. So down through 5,000, 21 miles to run, still looking good in terms of the profile. Not picking up the Arliss just yet. Speed just getting a touch high there now as we maintain the nav path, so we need a little bit of drag. And to Benbow for British 940. We'll come back into level change. We'll bring the speed back now towards 210 knots. And that's obviously going to have us trending slightly high here on the VNAV path, but we'll counter that with the drag in just a moment from the flaps. In terms of the heading bug here, we'll just slew that all the way around onto the runway course. Save us having to adjust it multiple times here as we come around the corner. We'll come in again on the range on the nav display. And you can see we are now picking up the RLS, both the low cam and the glide slope. Currently it's correct sensing, but we'll wait until we come onto a reasonable heading here before we arm it. As you can see there, the localizer now sensing incorrectly. So we can take the flaps below 230, we'll go through to flaps 5. That's going to give us the slats as well as the flaps. Again, give us some drag, help get the aircraft slowed down, uh, back onto our VNAV path. We'll come back towards 180 knots here before the turn, just help the aircraft with the turn radius, make sure we don't shoot through the loke. So again that's got us trending slightly high here on VNAV path currently, but as you can see we are below the glide. Just coming through 4,000 feet, 12 miles to run on the RLS, so looking good here in terms of the vertical profile. London, uh, good afternoon, easy 6441 with you, flight level 390 to Goodwood. And as we come back towards speed now, with the flaps out, you can see we are trending back towards VNAV path there as well. AZ6441 London, good afternoon, route director Sitet. So getting slightly low here now on the glide slope, we'll come back into vertical speed. We'll finesse ourselves onto the glide. There's VS minus 300, we've got MCP speed, vertical speed. And currently the ILS still incorrect sensing there on the low, now looking good. On a reasonable heading, we'll arm the approach. So we've got glide slope, VR loke armed. And just leaving Command A in for now. I believe it's standard procedure on the 7-3 that you only use the single autopilot channel unless you're carrying out an auto land. There's VR loke. I did read somewhere else that only applies to the NG, I'm not sure whether or not that applies to the classic. If you know then please do let me know. Break to sit in, 6441. Anyway, not planning on carrying out an auto land today, so we've just got the single channel for the autopilot. And maintaining 180 knots very nicely here, coming through 10 miles. Approaching 3000, so looking good, we should see glide slope capture fairly shortly. We'll maintain 180 for now. We'll take the gear down around 8 miles. And we'll start reducing the speed around 7. 
Again, on the inner ref page, it's going to be a flaps 30 landing, V ref 132, so V approach 137. And again, just coming back out on the range momentarily here so that we can see runway 24 there on the nav display. There's glide slope, single channel, and the go around altitude 3,000 foot is set. Ever so slightly out to the right of the load, currently the aircraft is correcting, down through 3,000 feet. And just coming up on 8 miles, so we'll take the gear down. Run my turn offs, and the taxi light can go on. We'll arm up the speed brake here as well. And we'll take the engine start switches through to continuous. 7 miles now, bring the speed back towards 160. Uh, the jet set 304, Charlie, climb flight 310, the radar heading is 180 degrees. That's check 2500. Rather a beautiful morning here in Edinburgh. Certainly much nicer than we saw out of Gatwick. And again, I think that's pretty stunning visuals, I'm sure you'll agree. There's flaps 15. As I mentioned earlier, the visuals within X-Plane are more hidden mist than Microsoft Flight Simulator, but certainly, at their very best, I would say they're pretty much up on the par with the Microsoft Sim. And overall, they can look a little bit more photorealistic at times. The Microsoft Flight Simulator does tend to be the more beautiful representation of the world overall. So plus four degrees again on the weather radar, just coming through five miles, no further ATC speed restrictions. We'll come back towards 137. And we'll take flaps 30. So it's waiting on the flaps and then we'll run the landing checklist. Significant pitch down there from the aircraft with the flaps. Jet set 304 Charlie London, good afternoon. Continue on that heading, climb flight level 350. Just coming back towards the approach, there's 30 on the flaps, so the landing checklist, engine start switches are set through to continuous, speed brake is armed with a green light, landing gear we have down three greens, and for the flaps we have 30 indicated, and again with the green light. So landing checklist is complete. Back now at V approach, the thrust should start to come up again to maintain V app. We'll take out the auto throttle. I know ordinarily that's done with the disconnect push button on the throttles, but I find it a little bit easier to do that with the MCP switch here in the sim. Ready, final 350, jet set 304, China. And just matching up our throttles here. We've got about 54% on the M1s. Down through a thousand feet, we are stable. Once again, the MDA 300 feet. And again, that looks absolutely beautiful. So two reds, two whites on the Pappy, nicely established on the glide slope and the loke. Speed looking good. We'll disconnect the autopilot. And we have FD on the FMA. Just needing a little bit of trim. You do still get the trim sounds with the FT Sim sound pack, so long as you have the flaps extended, which is a little bit of a weird quirk currently. Monarch 5901, contact London, 127 decimal 87, bye-bye. And again, just slightly out to the left of the centre line. Trending a touch high as well, so correcting for that. 27 decimal 87, one like 5, man, one goodbye. So approaching the MDA. We'll continue. Back off the throttles. Yeah. Just trying to finesse that touchdown. Onto reverses. And it was a fairly long landing there, so we'll go full reverse. Speed brakes are up. We have two reverses. And letting the auto brake do its thing for now. We'll start coming onto the brakes. We can vacate left off on Bravo.
Okay, so we just vacated runway 24, coming off at Bravo, left onto Alpha. We'll take the landing lights off. Hello, cargo 410, route direct to Dover. And same here for the strobes. We can retract the speed brakes. Flaps can come through to zero. And the weather radar can go off. Get the flight directors off here as well. Making the next right here onto Echo. And back up to the overhead. Take the putostatic heats off. Pressurization system can go through to ground. Then just start switches back through to the off position. Um, we'll start up the APU, it's going to be a very quick taxi now until we come onto the bay. Do have master caution, that's for the anti ice, given that we turned off the pitot static heat, so we'll cancel that. And as discussed, right here onto Echo, coming towards the apron. Looks like we've got quite a few options here in terms of the stand. We'll take the first stand here on the left with an air bridge. Looks like that's going to be stand four. And just before we come into stand, we'll take the runway turn-off lights off, taxi lights off there as well. Midland 8865 London, good afternoon. Client flight level 330. So left here onto four. As usual, there's no docking guidance available by default within the sim, so we'll just position ourselves here as we see fit. And off the thrust. Gently coming onto the brakes, getting the aircraft nice and slow here. Okay, onto the brakes, the part brake can go on. APU is available. Output looks good, we'll take that onto the bus. And we'll take the APU bleed on here as well. So we can shut down the engines. Cutting number one. Good shut down there on one, same on number two. And we have two good shutdowns. We'll take the TCAS off, transponder can go back through to standby. Seatbelt signs can go off. And same there as well for the anti collision lights. The shutdown checks, the fuel pumps are set. Pito static heats are selected off. Hydraulic pumps are set. Flaps. Are up, parking brake is set, engine start switches are off, weather radar is off, and that is the shutdown checklist complete here on the ground in Edinburgh. So there you go ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed the demonstration of both X-Plane 12 and the RXCG 737. As far as the aircraft goes, cost aside a very enjoyable add-on, and the FT Sim sound pack well worth checking out as well. Whilst I'm no expert when it comes to the Boeing, it does seem as though there are still a few features that have yet to be implemented, and there are one or two bugs around the aircraft as well. As far as X-Plane 12 goes, I do feel that I now have the sim at a point graphically where I'm happy to continue using it. As I mentioned during the introduction, certainly what you lose in graphical fidelity, you do make up for in realism. I think I've hopefully demonstrated that during the video here today. Once again though, please do bear in mind this is not vanilla X-Plane 12. I've spent many hours tweaking the sim to get it up to these sorts of standards. And even then, graphically speaking, the results can be a little bit hit and miss at times. Nevertheless, I really enjoyed the experience that the sim was able to provide, and I'm sure we'll be revisiting X-Plane 12 at a later date. Once again, I'll leave a link to all of the graphical enhancements that I used down in the video description below. And as always, feel free to leave me any comments regarding the sim or what you thought of the overall experience here today. I do certainly hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you've yet to do so and you'd like to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. And if you would like to help support the channel further, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. Once again, links to both of those will be in the video description. A very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It is very much appreciated. And to all of you, I do hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.